Hopkins algorithm is actually a defined way by which you can find the minimum spanning tree using a greedy approach. So if you are hearing the words minimum spanning tree or a greedy approach for the first time, I would highly recommend you to pause this video right over here and watch my tutorial videos on those concepts first. That will give you a better understanding. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First of all, we will take a familiar graph and find out its minimum spanning tree. Going forward, we are gonna actually use the Prim's algorithm to derive our minimum spanning tree. And then as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand how all of this actually works in action. Without further ado, let's get started. Let us say you have the sample weighted graph in front of you and its minimum spanning tree will look something like this. But how did we derive this minimum spanning tree? If you have been following my lectures, one way would be that once you have the sample graph, you can find out all the different possible spanning trees. And then you find out what is the weight of each of the spanning tree that you're creating. Out of all of these weights, you find out, okay, which spanning tree has the minimum weight? And that is your answer, right? So by this method, you are able to definitely find out, hey, this is the correct minimum spanning tree. But as you know, this is a brute force approach. It can end up taking a lot of time. And certainly a brute force approach isn't desirable. So how can you find an efficient way that you are able to determine that, hey, this is my minimum spanning tree. This is where the Prim's algorithm comes in. So basically, Prim's algorithm applies on a weighted graph and it helps you to find the minimum spanning tree using a greedy approach. Don't be scared by it. It is really simple. We will go step by step and then you will see how easily we can derive the minimum spanning tree. So once again, let us say I have this sample graph in front of me. And for a Prim's algorithm, we take the help of a priority queue. What a priority queue does is, all the elements in the priority queue, they will always be sorted in an ascending order. So it basically behaves like a queue. So you will have first in, first out. But if you are inserting elements into it, they will keep on getting sorted automatically in the ascending order. So you always know that when you're popping out an element from the queue, that is the smallest element. That is the principle that we will use. So where do we begin? As I said earlier, you can start at any given point. For this particular example, what I will do is, I will start from node number one. And what I have is, I have my priority queue over here, and I have one more set where I am gonna store all of the nodes that I have already covered. So right now what I'm doing, I am starting at my first node, correct? That means I am visiting node one, and since I have visited it, I will write down in my set over here, correct? Now comes the part where you have to start picking edges. You just picked a vertex right now, correct? So now you are at node number one, but you have to decide, okay, where can I go now? If you notice, you have three different edges that are coming from node number one. What you do is you put all of these edges in your priority queue. I have the edges three, two, and five. And since it is a priority queue, they will get stored in the queue in an ascending order. So first of all, I will have edge two, then I will have the edge three, and then I will have edge five. So this is how your edges are getting stored in your priority queue, right? And now your greed criteria is that you will try to be greedy and you will pick the edge with the minimum weight. Because in a minimum spanning tree, you want that the total weight of your spanning tree should be minimum. So we try to apply the same greed criteria. So now what happens? I pick up this particular edge, right? Because this has the minimum weight. So this edge will get popped out. I am picking up this edge as my first edge. And where do I land? I land at node number two. So basically what we do is, once we pick an edge, we check hey, which vertex I am landing at? And have I already covered this vertex? I am landing at vertex number two. And if you see, I haven't visited node number two yet. So I can safely pick this. I visit node number two now, and my pop is complete. 
what do you do next? Now you have reached node number two. And once again, you have to find that, okay, where do I go next? There are a lot of options. So if you remember from node number one, you had three edges, three, two, and five, and you had put all of them in your priority queue. Now you came on to node number two. And once again, this node has some edges. It has these three edges, one, two, and four. You already came from edge number two, right? So you are going to ignore it. The two new edges that you have, they are one and four. So both of these edges, they will go in your priority queue. And since it is a priority queue, they will go in an ascending order. So now what happens is edge one goes over here and the next edge is four. So this will go between three and five. So that is how you're proceeding ahead. You inserted your edges in the priority queue. Repeat the same process again. You will pop out from your queue and your queue will give the minimum edge that you have seen up till now, right? So I am getting edge one. So you pop this out and now look at this edge. This is the edge that I'm referring to. So we try to travel this edge and where do we reach? We reach at node number five and you check, Hey, have I already visited node five? No, right? So we are going to visit it. And this pop is now complete. You see what is happening over here, right? Now I am at node five. And once again, this gives me more options. Where can I go next? So node five actually has a degree of four. It is connected to four different edges. It is connected to edge three, edge one, edge nine, and then once again, edge one. So you have already visited this edge, but then again, what are the new edges that you have? You have the edge three, you have the edge nine and you have the edge one. So we will try to add these edges to my priority queue again. So I will add one, three, and then a nine. Three will not get added again because it is already there. Correct. So this is now done. I have now visited node five. So I will put five in my set as well. And to proceed ahead, once again, you will look in your queue and tell me that, okay, give me the minimum possible edge. So this time you get one again, you pop it out. But remember this time, this is this particular edge, not the one which we had previously covered. This will become clear when we're writing code, but for now, this is giving you a good idea. So what I will do is I will pick up this new edge. Now I get this edge and where does it land me? It lands me at node number seven. I have not already visited node seven. So that means I can visit it. I visit node seven and I can write it down in my set. So my pop is now complete. Repeat the same process again. Seven gives me two new edges to work with seven and two. So add both of these edges to your priority queue. Two gets added over here and seven gets added over here. Notice that in your priority queue, all the edges will be in an ascending order of the weight. So whenever you're popping out from the queue, it is guaranteed that you will get the edge with the minimum weight. So now we are done and now pop an element once again. Once you pop, which edge do you get? You get edge two and we are talking about this particular edge, right? So we cover this edge and it lands me at node number four. Have I already visited it? No. So I can safely visit this node and I'm going to write it down in my set as well, right? With node number four, which new edge do you get? You get a new edge that is number eight. So this edge will get added to your priority queue. And now my pop is complete. Now, if you pop once again, this is where things get interesting. I have my minimum edge weight three right now, correct? So once you try to pop it, what edge am I talking about? I am talking about this particular edge, right? And this particular edge is connected to nodes one and five. This is where my set comes in handy. I will check, Hey, have I visited any of these nodes already? If you notice, I have already visited nodes one and node five. So adding this edge, this will be redundant, right? Because it should not be a part of your spanning tree. So this is where you do not do anything with the edge and you just pop it. You don't add any edge to your minimum spanning tree. 
notice that all the edges that are in the green, they are becoming a part of your minimum spanning tree. We did not add any other edge to my priority queue now, so I will continue popping ahead. The next edge that I have, it is edge 4. So I am talking about this particular edge, right? You try to pop out this edge and then look. If I cover this edge, where is it taking me? It is taking me to node 3 and I have not visited node 3. So I can safely include this particular edge in my spanning tree, right? When I went to node number 3, I have a degree. I have all of these 4 edges, right? But all these edges 5, 4, 7 and 8, these are already included in my priority queue. So I don't have to do anything with it, correct? I will now continue my process. My next edge is edge 5, so that means it will be this particular edge. But both the nodes, I have already traversed them. So I will not include this edge in my spanning tree and I will just pop this element. The next edge is edge 7. Once again, with this edge, I have covered both the nodes, right? So this will also not be a part of your spanning tree. So I can safely pop it out. For edge 8, it is the same case. So once again, I will just pop it out and don't do anything. Now you have the last edge and that is edge 9. What do you do? You try to pop it out and then look at this edge. If you try to traverse this edge, where do you land? You land at node number 6. And have you traversed this node 6? No, right? So it means that you are gonna include this edge in your minimum spanning tree. And you can mark node number 6 as visited as well. Now if you look, node number 6 isn't adding any of the edges to your priority queue, right? And as soon as your priority queue is completely empty, you know that, okay, this is where you stop. And once you have stopped, all of these edges in the green, these are giving you your minimum spanning tree. If you try to recollect from your previous example, this was the minimum spanning tree, right? And you can get this from over here as well. I will just remove all the edges that I don't want to include. And that's it. This is the Prim's algorithm. We see that how just by doing a single iteration of all the nodes in the graph, I am able to find out my minimum spanning tree. And this happens using the greedy approach. Now, let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement the Prim's algorithm. And on the right, this time I have a smaller graph for better understanding. So what we basically do is, we pass in this entire graph as a parameter to the function Prim MFT. And this graph is gonna return me a list of all the edges that are completing this minimum spanning tree, right? Because that is how you define this tree, correct? So what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we create a set that is gonna store all of the vertices that we have already covered, right? And next, I create a priority queue. So this priority queue is gonna store all the edges in my priority queue in an ascending order. So I am sure that whenever I'm popping an element from the queue, it will be the minimum element, right? Next, I initialize minimum spanning tree edges. So this is gonna store my complete minimum spanning tree and we are gonna populate it. As you know, we can start from any of the vertex. So right now I am starting from vertex number zero, that is this one. And if you start from over here, what do I do? I add this starting vertex to my set. So I am just marking that I started with node number zero. And in my Boolean array, what I do is, I mark this position as true. So this helps me to quickly find out, hey, have I traversed this node or not? I will just look at the index. And if it is true, that means I have already covered it. If it is false by default, that means I have not covered it, right? I have now marked my node number zero as visited. So what is the next step? Add all of its edges. Add these edges to your priority queue. So basically what is happening is this particular edge and this particular edge, they get added to your priority queue. That is what I do over here, right? I add all the edges from my starting vertex to this priority queue. So edge four gets added over here and I will add edge number six. And now you run a while loop until your priority queue is completely empty. 
because we know that when the priority queue is completely empty, that is where you stop. In this while loop, what do you do? First of all, you try to pull an element. Pulling simply means you're popping out an element. So this gives me this particular edge. I pop out this particular edge and then check, hey, what is the destination? So this is where I get the destination from. And then I will check, hey, have I already covered this destination? Right now, the destination is two. So I look in my Boolean array and I have not covered this destination, right? So what I will do is I will mark this destination as true. That means I am now covering it and I will add this particular edge to my MST edges. So I am populating my MST edges that will be my minimum spanning tree. And at the same time, I'm also marking it as vivid, correct? Once this process is done, you're done with the pop right? But before that, you have to add all of these remaining edges. They should also go to your priority queue, correct? So that is what we do in the last step. I add all of the edges from my destination once again to my priority queue. So I have these particular edges, right? 4, 1 and 7. So what just happened? All of these three edges, they got added to your priority queue, right? You have covered node number two now. In the next iteration of your while loop, what will happen? You will pop out this smallest edge now, correct? So you will try to cover this edge and you are gonna cover a new node to vivid. So this is how you're populating all of your edges in the minimum spanning tree. Now you might have a question. What about the edge four? This got added again, right? But don't worry about it. Whenever this edge gets popped out once again, you are looking at this particular edge, right? And look at the nodes that you're connecting. You are connecting node zero and node two. If these nodes are already present in your vivid nodes, then what do you do? You simply continue, right? So this edge will just pop out and it won't do anything. So that is what you just have to do. This loop will continue to run on until your queue is completely empty. And once the queue is empty, then you will have your complete minimum spanning tree in these MST edges and you can simply return it. The time complexity of this algorithm is order of E where E is the number of edges because you have to iterate through every edge at least once. And the space complexity of this algorithm is also order of E because you need that space in your priority queue to store all of the edges at least once, correct? I hope now you have a better understanding about how does the PRIMS algorithm actually work. As for my final thoughts, I just want to say that PRIMS algorithm is a very good example of a greedy approach. So whenever you are encountering problems or algorithmic techniques where you are talked about a greedy approach, this should come into your mind. And to solidify your concept, just take out some examples, draw some weighted graphs on a paper and actually use the PRIMS algorithm to find out this minimum spanning tree. It is really gonna help you, trust me. So while going throughout the video, did you face any problems or do you have any other method in your mind by which you can implement the PRIMS algorithm? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments as well. Stay tuned for my next video on the Kruskal's algorithm. Until then, see ya.